Hello, my name is Jason Mahoney, and I am a PhD student at UW-Madison working with Theo Rakatsinas and Shivaram Vekitaraman, and I'll be presenting Marius, a system for scaling the training of graph embeddings on a single machine. Graphs are a powerful representational structure. They can be used to model a wide variety of scientific and industrial data. From particle physics to protein interactions, complex relationships between entities can be represented by a graph. To perform predictive tasks over graph structured data, graph embeddings have emerged as the de facto method. Graph embedding methods transform the nodes and edge types of a graph into high dimensional vectors, known as embeddings. Where these embeddings can then be used to make predictions about the structure of the graph or as features in a downstream model. We consider link prediction in this work, where candidate edges are assigned a score based on the function of a source, edge type, and destination embedding. Graph embeddings are trained by iterating over all the edges in the graph, where a loss term is computed per edge. The loss is then used to update the embeddings of the source node, edge type, and destination node of that edge. Typically, edges are grouped into batches, where the loss and updates are computed per batch. To illustrate a single iteration, take a given batch size of two, John born in Madison and Madison, capital of Wisconsin. To compute the loss of this batch, the embeddings of the nodes and edge types using the batch will need to be read from storage. After computing the updates from the loss, the embedding vectors are updated. And so taking a closer look at the embedding vectors accessed during this iteration, we can see that they're spread out across the embedding table. That is to say, they are regularly accessed. And so because of this, the embedding tables must be in memory and near the computational device for efficient training. Otherwise, data movement will occur. This is not a problem for small graphs, but for large graphs, the embedding table can easily be larger than GPU memory capacity. For example, the Freebase 86M dataset, a subset of the Freebase knowledge graph, has 338 million edges, 86 million nodes, and 15,000 edge types. Training 400 dimensional embeddings on this graph will require 138 gigabytes of storage for the parameters. On the commonly used AWS P32X large instance, the embedding table will not be able to fit in GPU or even CPU memory. And so in order to scale, we need to store parameters in some larger pool of storage and then move them to the GPU. One approach used by Amazon's DGLKE is to use a machine with a large pool of CPU memory and transfer batches to the GPU synchronously. However, this results in slow training due to data transfer and is fundamentally limited by CPU memory capacity. Another approach used by Facebook's PyTorch BigGraph is to partition the parameters and store them on disk, swapping partitions into GPU memory as needed. This approach is bottlenecked by the swapping of partitions. Both DGLKE and PyTorch BigGraph support a distributed multi-CPU mode, but this is expensive, it has a complex deployment, and it is still impacted by data transfer overheads. Systems that scale the training of graph embeddings are limited by data movement. Can these limitations be lifted? To address data movement overheads inherent in the graph embedding workload, we introduced Marius, an efficient system for single machine training of embeddings on large scale graphs. We apply techniques such as pipelining, asynchronous IO, and buffer management to hide and reduce data movement. We also introduce an IO minimizing data ordering generated by the buffer, at buffer aware edge traversal algorithm, or beta for short. From these contributions, we alleviate the data movement bottlenecks that affect existing systems, allowing us to train 10x faster than DGLK on the billion edge Twitter graph and 3.7x faster than PyTorch Big Graph on Freebase 86M. The runtime improvements can be directly inferred from the plot below, which shows the GPU utilization of the systems during a single epic of training. And from this, we see that Marius has a 2x utilization improvement over PyTorch Big Graph and a 6 to 8x improvement over DGLKE. Here we can view our contributions in the context of the Marius system architecture. We use pipelining to saturate the GPU with batches of edges and embeddings from CPU memory. We also use asynchronous I.O. to prevent any wait times due to partition swaps. These allow us to maximize GPU utilization through the elimination of wait times. And these components are highlighted on the diagram on the right. Our partition buffer, which resides in CPU memory, caches partitions, which are swapped in disk. 
And so this caching mechanism allows us to reduce IO during training or disk IO during training. And so to improve the ability of this partition buffer to cache partitions, we introduced the novel beta ordering. This allows us to iterate over the partitions during training in an order in which minimizes the amount of swaps to this buffer and therefore minimizes the amount of IO. And it actually does this close to the lower bound. And so next we discuss the beta ordering in detail. And so because we store our embeddings on disk and we need efficient irregular access to the embeddings, we must partition the embeddings and load them sequentially into CPU memory. Where once they're in CPU memory, the embeddings can then be efficiently accessed within the partitions. We correspondingly group the edges into P squared edge buckets, where edge bucket IJ contains all edges which have a source in partition I and a destination in partition J. And so to train one epic, we must iterate over all edges and therefore all edge buckets. The order in which these edge buckets are processed has a large impact on the amount of IO performed during training. As every time we perform a swap, we will have to read and write many gigabytes. Therefore, we want to have as few swaps as possible. For example, if the edge bucket 3.2 has been processed, the partitions 3 and 2 reside in the partition buffer in CPU memory. It requires no extra swaps to process partition or edge bucket 2.3, but processing edge bucket 2.4 requires one swap, Processing edge bucket 4.5 requires two swaps. And so we can derive an analytical lower bound for the minimum number of swaps needed to process all edge buckets. And we do this by using the fact that any given swap to the buffer can provide at most two C minus one edge buckets to be processed. And so for this example, not counting the swaps to initialize the buffer to some random state, we get a lower bound of six. And so looking at different orderings for this example, uh, first taking a random order in uh, over the edge buckets, this will result in a total of about 23 sw swaps. Applying an ordering generated by the Hilbert space filling curve, which has been used in prior graph processing systems such as Mosaic or Frank Mishkeri's cost paper, will result in about 12 swaps. And as animated here, the beta ordering is able to achieve a number of swaps near the lower bound with only about seven swaps. We next go into detail on the algorithm to generate the ordering. So first we initialize the buffer to contain a random C partitions. Then we process the edge buckets associated with the partitions in the buffer. We keep the first C minus one partitions as fixed, and then we use the last entry in the buffer to cycle through the rest of the partitions. And so now we swap out three, bring in four, we process its edge buckets, we swap out four, bring in five, process its edge buckets. And now we've reached a point where all edge buckets that use partition zero and partition one have been processed. And so now we can swap out these partitions, bring in C minus one new partitions and repeat the process until we have processed all edge buckets uh, this epic. And so at the end of this, we get a total of seven swaps which is close to the lower bound, the six swap lower bound. And so a little on Marius is a uh, open source. Um, it's an open source project that's released at mariusproject.org under the Apache 2.0 license. And it is built upon PyTorch and can be run within Docker containers for easier deployment. It's written in about 15,000 lines of C++ and comes with the Python API for ease of use with support for custom models, loss functions, and data sets. We evaluate Marius on a number of standard benchmark data sets and graph embedding models using the P32X large instance on AWS. But due to time constraints, we only will cover uh, two experiments, the single GPU training comparisons with the baseline systems on large scale Twitter and Freebase 86M data sets. And then we compare the beta order in runtime and IO reduction versus existing orderings and the lower bound. Our paper contains a more comprehensive evaluation and as shown by these artifact evaluation badges, our GitHub repository contains detailed instructions on reproducing all of our results. So first comparing the systems on the billion edge uh, Twitter social graph, we find we are able to train embeddings in 3.5 hours, whereas DJLKE takes 35 hours. We also find we are about 1.5 X faster than PyTorch big graph with similar or better MR than both systems where MRR is a metric for link prediction accuracy. Turning towards the Freebase 86M knowledge graph, 
we were able to train 3.7x faster than PyTorch BigGraph while achieving the same accuracy. We do not include DJLKE here as it could not run on this data set due to CPU memory size constraints. Next, we evaluate the performance of the beta ordering against multiple orderings. The first, the lower bound, is not actually an ordering, but it does denote the minimum number of swaps, which we can then use to infer the minimum amount of I.O. that is to be performed. Next, we compare against two space filling curve approaches. Hilbert, which applies a space filling curve directly over the edge buckets to produce an ordering, and then Hilbert symmetric, which modifies the Hilbert ordering to reduce the number of swaps by 2x. And it does this by processing edge buckets, which operate on the same partitions together. We do not evaluate the random order as it is infeasible to run, requiring far too many swaps. And so here we compare the total IO performed during a single epic of training on Freebase 86N. On the x-axis, we vary the number of partitions and scale the partition buffer to always hold one fourth of the partitions in memory. The y-axis is the total amount of IO performed in terms of gigabytes. From this, we can see that the Hilbert curve results in the most IO with Hilbert symmetric having the next most. And then we see that the beta ordering results in about 33% IO, less IO than the best Hilbert curve approach. And as we see, as we increase the number of partitions, the beta ordering uh, tracks closely with the lower bound. And so the next figure here shows the total runtime for the orderings after 10 epics of training with an embedding dimension of 50 and with 100. And so we can see that the reduction in IO from fewer swaps directly translates into runtime reductions of about 33% over the best space filling curve ordering over symmetric. And so in conclusion, what we have shown is that existing systems uh, for the training of graph embeddings are bottlenecked by data movement. And Marius alleviates these data movement bottlenecks through pipelining and asynchronous IO, full memory stack utilization through the partition buffer, and then IO minimization with the novel beta ordering. We're also very excited for our follow-on work to Marius, where we aim to support more workloads, such as graphical networks. We are also applying Marius to various scientific domains, namely high energy physics and paleobiology, where we have a demo paper appearing in VLDB 2021. And as a reminder, Marius is open source at mariusproject.org. And my email is available on the slide here, where I'll be happy to answer any questions if you reach out. Thank you very much.